asking myself a lot of questions about collaboration and what are the skeleton and muscles of collaboration that make that work. And I don't have all the answers, but I do think that one of those muscles is trust. So that leads me to ask, how do we make that muscle stronger? How do we build trust? As an actor and a designer and an improviser, I've collaborated in a lot of different situations. As an actor, we have weeks of rehearsal that we come together as artists, each of us bringing our own piece, the designer, the actor, the director, the stage manager. <laughs> and we, we learn to trust that each one of us is going to bring a certain level of work to the show on opening night and that we will come to expect the best out of that person every night. As a designer, I experience the same thing. Over projects that have succeeded and projects that have failed, I learn the skills of my fellow collaborators and I learn what to expect of them and that I know that they will do their best work at any given time to make that project succeed. Now as an improviser, it's a little different. Because there's no weeks of rehearsing and there's no prior experience with that moment on stage to help us navigate through it. In improv, the product is the process. We're creating that work for the audience while the audience is watching. So how do you build trust without that luxury of time and knowledge? How do you compress that process into a five minute warm up before you jump on stage together? Because at any time I may step up with people I know very well or I've never met before in a new city on a new stage. So I want to share with you a little personal journey through trust that I've had to go through. When I was young, I was molested by a stranger in a movie theater. And from that moment on, every time I was in a public space, it felt like I was under attack. I felt like I was in a hostile environment when I was on the bus. And I felt like I would have a panic attack when I was in a mall. And even calling the pizza guy would make my palms sweat. Because I didn't know him. I didn't trust him. So for me, learning to trust that new person in that situation was very difficult. I actually had hard evidence that strangers were dangerous. And I think we all do. I mean, people are jerks. From anywhere from a range from making a rude comment online to actually being life-threatening. So we all have the struggle with trust in strangers. So who did I turn to for help to make this change in my life so that I wouldn't be scared anymore? Improvisers. Also therapy, to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> but through the wisdom of improv, I learned that I could step up on stage and no matter what happened, as long as I was listening and open to new possibilities, I had the tools to navigate any situation on stage. And I learned self-trust. And I also learned that I'm not competing with that person on stage. I read an article recently about collaborators being survivors. That if you're constantly killing off the competition, eventually their sights are going to be on you and you are going to be killed off. So if you, I learned to trust in that other person that way. And I learned to trust in the audience. The audience can be extremely forgiving when you're struggling, as long as you bat your eyes and smile. <laughs> Del Close, who's one of the originators of long-form improv, which is what I perform and study, uh, he talked about treating your audience as poets and geniuses. And every time I step up on stage, I try to live that. I look at my partner on stage as a poet and genius, that everything we come up with has intent, it was meant to happen, and that the audience is able to process it, that we're all performing and processing the best work we're capable of at any given time, that we're all working at the top of our intelligence. So the Dalai Lama has a Twitter account and I follow it. <laughs> and the other day, while I was putting this talk together, he tweeted that he approaches everyone as if they're old friends. And that struck me that that's what I'm trying to get at here. What if we approached every interaction like we had a history with them? Old friends, think about it. We've forgiven them and they've forgiven us. 
We've messed up with each other and we've learned to navigate and learn to trust. We choose to trust again and again with old friends. So what if we went with every, into every interaction like we had an established relationship, which, by the way, is how you start a good improv scene. Because you want to start in the middle, because that's where the good stuff is. If you start in the beginning, it's going to take too long to get to the good stuff. So think about that the next time you're in traffic and you're hemming and hawing about all these people that are in your way and in the way of you making your goal, or you're in the grocery store line and the lady behind the counter is taking forever to look up the celery number. <laughs> now, that might not be in your personal vision of efficiency, but think about also, in traffic and in line, you're actually all pointed in the same direction. No director could stage it better of you all sharing the same goal than to have you pointed in the same direction. <laughs> so think about all of those interactions as mini collaborations. That you're all in that situation. You all want the same thing at the end. And work together with those poets and geniuses around you. And choose to trust them. Thank you. <laughs>